Hello, everybody. I'm homes at home. Here I am again. I got to tell you, though, today is super, super hot outside. It's about 36 degrees Celsius here, which would be 72, 102 degrees Fahrenheit in the United States uh, to, to the same temperature. Some places hotter, some places cooler. We are still working on the deck. I am loving this bit by bit. It's starting to come together out of my mind into reality. And I would love to show you a little clip of what I'm doing. Then we're going to talk about a few things. So let's take a look at the clip. Seven weeks into doing this 1,400 square foot deck. Let me tell you where we're at so far. I don't want you to see too much. You can start to see the cedar that's going in. The idea at the beginning was there was so much cedar. This deck was stunning. My guys are working right now. It would be so much maintenance yearly to seal all of the cedar every single year was to reduce the maintenance, bring down about 90% and only do about 10% of sealing. That's what I wanted to do. The stone floor is in place, cedar starting to go in, fascia soffit is being put in with the pot lights, the special lighting design. You know me, choice lighting is what I'm looking for. Rails have gone into place, which start to make a difference when you see the finishing touches on things. I'm getting a little bit excited because I know what this looks like in my mind. And we're almost there where this picture reflects on my mind. What do we still have to do? We're going to wrap the columns that you see and in aluminum. You're going to love this. I will show you this later. That's the dining area. This is the kitchenette bar area. If we can have an outdoor kitchen, especially in these days of this pandemic, where we have a kitchen bar combo, I was going to say beer in the fridge, but how about pop and water? That's all we need to know. And we can go into the nighttime with the fireplace, the TV, and family. Keep watching. You're going to love this. Okay, I'm having a lot of fun doing this. It's, it's what I get to do because I'm stuck at home. Uh, much bigger job than I expected. Right now, today, we have the spray cork guys. Uh, we're going to add some spray cork to the bottom of the outside skirt. I'll show you that next week. We'll show you how to how we're going to be wrapping those columns in the aluminum. Little tricks and things that I've done. I've had to pull up the interlocking stone on the pool side that runs to the deck. And before I had two trough drains for heavy round, uh, rainfall that came down, I wanted to di disperse that water under the deck, which I've got a ton of stone on it, and away from the pool area. So instead, uh, once I put the stone back, and I'm talking the interlocking stone, I made sure that it was watertight and pervious, uh, the fill that we used in between the interlocking stone. But where the stone met the deck is where I put in a permeable. It's actually uh, 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 quite the system, and it's an epoxy mix that bonds sand together and allows water to go through. So I took out the troughs that I had before. I created a drainage point in two areas, and I put in the permeable fill in, at the end where it meets the deck. Now if rain rushes down there, it drains out, doesn't pool up. These are the little tricks and things that I'm doing to make the difference. After all, this is my deck. We want to make sure we do things right. Today, we are going to be talking to Dominic. He's my uh, window guy, probably the best window guy I've ever met in my life. You know, he does all the windows and doors on my show and has for many years. He's helped a lot of people. We're going to be talking about pros and cons to installation, whether or not you should do it yourself. Answer some questions that you may have online. And then we're going to be talking to Pamela from Michigan. And she is working on her own shower. I kind of like it when homeowners tempt their own fate. And she's got a couple of questions, and I'm going to see if I can help her. All along, let's stay in touch and communication. Right now, where's Dominic? Dom, how are you? Mike, I'm good. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well. First of all, why don't we talk about, because it's so hot in here, what, have you, what are you doing with during this pandemic? Are you working? We're working with, with some restrictions. You know, we're making sure safety and health is the number one. But uh, we're working at a slower pace, but we're getting the job done. Las Vegas, we love that. That's good. It's the same as us. We're still doing a bunch of construction, but everything is slow. If the plumbers want to be in the house by themselves, we'll say that's okay. Ongoing with everyone else. And we try to keep to that group of people, people that are not too many in the house. I get it. This is going to cause headaches for everyone, including homeowners. But it is what it is, and we have to stay safe both for us and the homeowners. Now, 
I'm going to show a, a video clip of Homes and Homes Season 3. It was last year. You'll remember this, Dominic. One of the houses, this is the lady that had to get everything done twice. And this is a special clip. So let's take a look at it. Look at that. Oh, wow. It's raising. This oh, it's should... bowed in the center. I'm surprised it didn't crack as of yet. Expansion, contraction. And the only reason I would think is because the vinyl is strong enough. Right. It wasn't a true window installer. I think it was the framer, carpenter, build, whatever it was who framed the rough openings. The truth is, anyone can install a window. It's not but rough if you science. don't install it correctly, you have problems. I've always said, Installation is a key ingredient, and we'll know more once we remove the glass about the drainage system. They have fogged up in between the two. Eventually, they would be spending money on replacing the glass. By the time they do that, might as well go with brand new windows and do it right. So we're not just replacing the windows because they were poorly installed, but we're also going to upgrade the energy efficiency as well. Correct. <laughs> After removing the glass, we finally realized where the water has been coming from. The installer here did a major no-no. They drilled half-inch holes and installed screws downwards onto the sill. All you're doing here is creating a tunnel for the water to get in. And who knows what we're going to find here now. I'm scared to remove this window. It could be rotted wood, it could be rotted sheathing. We're lucky here that there was a nice poly wrap, a membrane that protected the wood. If that poly wasn't there, we'd have major issues. Dominic, you remember that one, don't you? Very well, I do, Mike, very well. Okay, we had two problems there. One, we had a very poor performance or cheaply made window. Two, we had a terrible installation. Now, I don't think a lot of people realize out there, both in the United States and in Canada, around the world for that, for that matter, that windows and doors, we want to put our money into performance. So we want high grade. It's not about double glass or triple glass. It's about quality frames that are airtight for your home, correct? I agree 100%, Mike. Quality... foundation to that glass. We spoke about you like before, what's the use of putting a frame on a paper glass, uh, excuse me, a glass and a paper frame. You need the support, you need the foundation. Well, we saw that window and what it was doing, it was bowed up and that was the actual vinyl that was bowed up. Whether or not that was, you know, freezing thaw problems or just because vinyl is the number one product in the world that expands and contracts differently. So uh, we have steel, concrete, you name it, everything expands and contracts, but vinyl is the worst for that. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you have a poorly built window, the expansion and contraction and poor insulation is going to be a big problem in the future. You know, people say to me, Mike, you gotta be the most expensive guy out there. And that's not true because I try to, I try to say to people, you put in the right windows, you put in the right door, you put in the right cladding, the right roof, you never have to take it off and do it again or in, until its life expect, expectancy is up. But spending your money right actually saves you money in the long run. Do you agree? I agree, Mike. It's pay now or pay later. Simple thing. But you should only pay later. It costs you more money. Do it right the first time and you'll have no problems. Yeah, see, this, somebody should uh, trademark that. Oh, wait a minute. I think I did. Uh, <laughs> Kathy's got a question <laughs> here. From Kathy and let's see, Kathy Abbott Dove. 1986 wood windows they seem okay except for getting stuck occasionally do they have a lifespan pros and cons of replacing them remember years ago dom that wood windows was the number one choice that everyone wanted probably because imagination said one that was the first part of windows they were wood then we moved into vinyl we moved into metal what is the pros and cons about having the old 1986 windows should they replace them or not what do you think it's, it had its lifespan. 1986 is a long time ago, so they should look into it. They would get an assessment at least, see what's wrong with them. There are some windows that have lasted longer. It's the, a lot of has to do with the maintenance of the product, Mike. You know, if they maintain it, they could last longer. But 1986, it's a, it's a long time. 
Well, a wood window, like anything would, like my deck that I'm working on, which is why I'm doing all that work, the maintenance is way too much. If people like painting the windows, great, or staining the wood, that's great, but you must maintain it. And if you don't, they, the performance will fail. So at 1986, that would be 24 years old. I would say it's about time for new windows. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go back to wood windows personally because I like the way we're engineering now with the vinyl. Uh, wood, again, is being maintenance. We have another question here, Tom. June, please discuss double and triple pane windows and which is the best for acoustic value. Need something to block out the neighbor's barking dog. Here, to me, we're going to have a higher R value with a triple pane over a double pane, but the big thing about a triple pane window is sound, correct? Correct. Uh, they're going to see at all airports, any hotel that's at the airport, they're going to have triple pane glass. Very expensive. Not something I think we should use at home unless you have a loud barking dog next door. I agree, Mike. You know, triple paints are simple. It's another pain in the glass. <laughs> uh, that was pretty good. Needs it. Not everyone needs it, but certain situations you need it. Uh, triple plane does have higher R values, energy rating, but sometimes the money spent extra for triple paint does not justify the cost for the performance, what you're getting out of it. It is nice. I recommend it more for sound than anything else. For uh, per performance, yes. On paper, it's great. In reality, is it worth the money? Let's put it this way. I don't have it in my house. I'm in agreement. I don't have it in my house neither. But if I lived by the airport or if I had very loud neighbors or I had a reason to want to shut them out, then I would actually think about purchasing a triple pane window. I'm in total agreement. Buddy, is this the proper way to install replacement windows? Yes, they are really up against the original windows that have been there for years. Okay, this is kind of funny here. So we have a window leaning up and it's been there for years now. Okay, buddy, is this your house that has this? Because that's kind of strange and I'd be surprised that it fix it. The window well appears to have a problem. It's also pushed in the middle of the holding the window in place. Uh, Something tells me you need to call Dom and come over and take a look at your house. Did you see that, Dom? Yeah, it's, I'm just shaking my head at it, Mike. It's not the first one I've seen say anything like that. It's, it's, what are you going to do? I mean, people think they're professionals. Let them do what they got to do. It's sad. The homeowners get affected by it. It's heartbreaking, actually. But you know, it's funny because we're, I, I talk, you heard me talk earlier about performance of windows and, and putting your money on the outside, work from the outside in. But you can actually install a fairly cheap window if you install it perfectly. If you can't afford great windows, you can buy a cheaper grade window. Then it's all about the installation. And that's what's going to make the difference, right? Installation will make the difference, but the cheaper grade window won't last as long as a higher grade window. Yeah. It's designed for a lifespan. So installation will just give it a longer life than normal, but it will not outlast a higher grade quality window. Okay, look at this one. John, John's got 100 year old windows that are partially below grade, are better replaced or left alone. Should I work to cover the outside window? Well, I want to hear you say leave it alone and work on the outside, cover over the window. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, John. What you need to do in this case is actually, yes, you want to put in a new window. Yes, you want a window well. And at the same time, if you can create a drainage down to the weepers under your dear old home usually means there's no weepers, so I don't know whether or not you have them. Meaning that weeping line that goes around the foundation, which controls that water that runs against it. So I agree with the window that you should replace it. I absolutely agree with a new window well, and at the, at the least, put in a window well, because it's, it is below grade. Kerry Robertson, our windows keep keep getting black mold on the plastic part and need cleaning. Why is that? Tom, you take this one. Humidity levels, high high humidity levels in the winter time. So in a lot of cases, right? In a lot of cases, it's on the inside of the house, and that's usually because somebody's closed their curtains up, which is not so good because then we don't get that air movement against the window. We've got that cold drive from the outside, warm air on the inside creates the condensation, and what that's going to do is give some surface mold on the windows. So uh, advice to that for me, then I want you to do it, Tom, for me would be 
make sure we have air movement. Don't keep your curtains closed all the time or do a shear so air can get through it. Make sure your registers are not blocked. Make sure your air return is not blocked. That's condensation building on the inside. I think you have an air movement problem. Anything else from you, Dom? Circulation is a key ingredient, Mike. I agree with you. You need the circulation of air movement. The problem is a lot of people don't know that. They close their you know, window curtains at nighttime. They want privacy. They wake up to the frozen windows, and then with that, sometimes they get mold. They have, everything has to breathe. Everything. And so are windows. And that is a true fact. Everything needs to breathe. One way or another, we do have scientific ways to make things breathe. That doesn't make sense, but that's, that's things we do on the show. By the way, Dom, we are going to be going into another season uh, of Homes and Homes for the United States. Everyone's going to get excited out there because we're going to be doing this, and I'm going to need your help, Dom, because we're going to be helping a lot more families. Are you in? Oh, Mike, we don't have to ask that. You know that. We're in. We're all in here with pleasure and pride. You know, uh, I love this guy because he actually has a whole lot of integrity, a whole lot of trust. He's everything that I'm about. And uh, that's why we have a group of people around us that are the best of the best, the ones who care. Dom, I thank you so much. I want you and your family to stay safe. I look forward to talking to you again, and I look forward to seeing you on the show. Thank you very much, Mike. Have a great day, man. Bye. All right, right now, does anyone have a question for me? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull a little surprise thing in a little bit, so pay attention. You're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. Right now, if you have any questions, just send me a question. Uh, we're going to bring, let's see, is it Paula? I love that. Paula from Michigan, she's got a couple of questions for me. Hey, hey, Paula. How you doing, Paula? Uh, it is how I got my name, too. That was my mom's favorite song. <laughs> oh, my God. That's probably how we were conceived. I'm, I'm, I'm just sure of it, right? <laughs> Music has a way of having love. It just does. How is my voice? Can you hear me good now? I know we had a problem earlier. Yeah, you're still a little shaky. Okay, so I will try and talk that you can hear me. So are you good? I will work through it. Okay. You are working on your shower. You were doing this yourself. You were not a professional, correct? That's uh, correct. Pay. So we pay a place to shower twice a week. Uh, well, you pay which is gross, but we're doing what we can, and you're stressed out beyond belief. You obviously don't have a shower. Correct. What is the question you would like to ask me? Um, well, I was hoping that by the end of our conversation, I would know what exactly the problem was for sure. So we, um, we actually had the shower built by a professional. There was no shower there. There was no existing shower, and um, it's a steam shower. Our contractor sought some professional help to to figure out what kind of system to use. And they did say to do a Schluter system and we angled the ceiling as you could probably see in the pictures, uh, which I wasn't happy about at first, but <laughs> I learned to live with it. And then um, uh, I bought that beautiful tile that I love. It's a two by 20 tile in and of itself. It's beautiful. And then um, because we've never done a steam shower before, we weren't sure what kind of grout or what kind of mortar to use, excuse me. So we sought professional help and they sold us the most expensive mortar there is, the $50 a bag stuff that is um, super, um, what's the word? Modified. super modified. They said that that's what you're supposed to use for a steam shower. And shortly afterwards, all our tile are cracked. Crazy. Okay, uh, hopefully you can hear me. Mm -hmm. When you use the Schluter system, you can no longer use a modified thin set. We have to understand the difference between a modified thin set and a non-modified thin set. Right. A modified thin set will dry chemically, where a modified thin set dries by air. Because yeah. you use the Schluter system and the tile, there's no longer any air. I don't really know why the tiles cracked other than they were definitely installed incorrectly. Schluter has made their own thin sets, so it's dummy proof, and they did this for a reason. Mm -hmm. Too often, too many people want to use their system, that orange curdy or the orange Dieter that goes on the floor that you've seen on my show so many times. The reason they made their own thin set was that everyone out there stopped making the mistake of using a modified when you can't use it. And yes, modified is the most expensive. Yeah. You need the non-modified. 
But if you buy the Schluter thin set, you don't have a problem. You can use any one of their, their mixes and it will always work. And that's why they do this. Whenever, to everyone out there, you are going to use Schluter products. Schluter is one of the best companies out there that I know of that will communicate back and forth with you and teach you the right way of doing it, even if you're a homeowner. They care about you using their product properly. So all you have to do is look up Schluter, get in touch with them. There's a place everywhere where they teach people how to use their product, and they do it for free. They can give you a free class. So one, you've used the wrong thin set. Yep. Okay. Now, anything else? Um, is there any way to know for sure if it if there was anything wrong with the tile itself? Because um, it's a it is a um, a handmade tile from Spain. And so at first we thought that maybe it was because the tile wasn't, you know, didn't get heated hot enough in the kiln or go through the kiln long enough or something. Cause we've tried doing a couple of test things before we made sure that it was actually the mortar. And we've gone back to the mortar company, the place that recommended it. Um, of course, no one's, you know, willing to help us out at all. Okay. So where are the tiles cracked on the floor? I assume, and not the wall. Can you repeat the question, please? Where did the tiles crack? On the floor or on the wall? The wall and the ceiling. The wall and the ceiling? Okay, that's really, really strange. Uh, that should not happen, at, even if your tiles were not kiln, kiln drying properly. I mean, it's a steam shower. Uh, well, it's because, I mean, isn't it because we used the wrong mortar? Because we have the super modified? That is a possibility, but a super modified, it would take a lot longer to dry that thin set that's on the wall and or floor. Uh, you would have, you wouldn't be able to grout it right away. You'd have to let that, you'd have to let it dry for days. Wait. Yep, and we did. And we did. I mean, only the ceiling is grouted, um, and they're all cracked. But the walls have not been grouted yet, and they're all cracked as well. Even in the niche, and we have the we have the Schluter niche. And they're, they started cracking a couple days after they were installed. Okay, so my recommendation to you, and I'm really sorry, you've ordered this tile from another area, which probably cost you a fortune, is to pull all the tile down. You're going to have to relook at the Schluter system, the Curdy, the Dietra, uh, whoever installed it. Maybe that's also installed incorrectly. Unfortunately, I'm saying you've got to go back to the minimum, take it all down, and do it again. This time, make sure you at least take the Schluter course or you bring someone in that knows how to install it. Very important. Probably yeah, this time, go with a porcelain tile because this is a steam shower. A porcelain tile is much stronger than any other tile out there. And yeah. all or you're not going to have a problem with it. I'm sorry, Paula. Yeah. Because you know what I would do. What's that? You know what I would do. <laughs> yeah. I take it down and do it again. We are going to. We're looking to find a contractor to take it all down and start over. But I wish you could come do it and take it down and start over. <laughs> well, Michigan's an awful nice place. And right now, I probably would come over. You know, I, I do actually work for food and maybe a couple of beer after work. And we are on a lake, so you could swim when you got done and we're hot. Well, maybe I can bring my boat there. You know, that, that yeah, might be good. I know I could. All right, well, good luck to you. Any problems, please get back to me, and thank you so much for asking the questions, Paula. Have a okay. great, wonderful day, and let's make it right, okay? All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, so if you have any questions, now is the time, and I'm going to give you a little hint about this thing that I'm getting all excited about. I'm going to show you more things. i got about two to three weeks left on my deck, and it came from somebody out there as a request that I do some kind of, uh, let's say, re a live reveal, that I do it with you, that thousands of people can party on my deck, but we're going to do it via the internet. And I think this is a great idea. So let's see. I don't know how many people at once can have a party with me, but let's, let's see if it can be really good. I'll cook the burgers and the steaks. We'll have some drinks. A couple of things that I'm going to be doing I met a lady at uh, General Products, one of the biggest uh, outdoor, ins uh, uh, fur beautiful outdoor deck furniture. I liked her so much, I saw her at the boat show, 
And she just seemed to have talent oozing out of her ears. Now, normally I do all the designs, but I, she doesn't even know yet. I wonder if she's watching this. I'm going to actually ask her if she wants to set up my deck. In other words, create a reveal for me that I walk out of my house and she stages my deck and, and knocks me off my feet. This is what I really want. Because once you build something beautiful, now is the part of dressing it up. Plants, the fireplace, the furniture, the love zone, the lighting, the options. That's what I want to see. And at the end of all of this, we're going to have a party together. So this is going to be really good. Until next Tuesday, everyone stay safe. Stay off the streets. Wear masks when you need them. Keep smiling. Love you.